Who's got two thumbs and just put liquid metal on this GL63? This guy right here. First thing we need to do is remove the battery. There's one screw holding it in place. Once that's removed, you will literally be able to just lift the battery off and set it off to the side. Next, we are gonna completely remove the four screws over the GPU section, back out the three screws over the CPU section, unplug both fans. There's gonna be two screws that hold each fan in place. We need to remove those as well. And then there's a thick cable on our right-hand side fan from our view right here. We're gonna to need to carefully pry that up to reveal one of the screws on said fan. And then after that, we'll go ahead and unplug that cable and get it out of the way altogether. Here I will use a plastic pry tool and carefully pry up on the heatsink solution itself. Be careful not to press down on any of the components here. Just find a bare spot. Work around this carefully. Do not rush. You definitely do not want to bend your heatsink when you remove it. To my surprise, I was a little saddened as well that we have thermal compound over the memory, chokes, and VRM surrounding the GPU. The CPU area does use thermal pads, so we're okay there. This is not a bad deal from a thermal standpoint. It's just a pain in the butt to clean up. So I'm going to be scraping using lots of Q-tips, isopropyl alcohol, paper towels, all sorts of cloths to get that area clean. It does not need to be absolutely 100% removed in this area, but you do want to get all of the points that contact onto the actual heat sink itself. And of course, on top of the RAM, VRMs and chokes, the little nooks and crannies, of course, you do not need to get that out as you are going to be just packing that area with more thermal interface material anyway. Same process for the actual heat sink itself. Just carefully remove all of the paste. This is going to take you some time. This whole entire tear down liquid metal and reassembly was about 57 minutes on my end. I probably spent 20 minutes of that making sure that this was relatively clean and ready to be reused. I just wanted to point out these two empty memory spots here. Of course, we would have two more gigabytes of RAM if this was a 2070. Kind of neat. This is ultimately the same motherboard that they would use on the higher end SKUs. Here I'm going to cover the contact points on the PCB area surrounding the CPU with 33 plus tape. This is a very thin electrical tape. 
This is very important as we do not want the tape's surface to be thicker than the actual CPU die itself as that will compromise the actual fitment on the heatsink. Now the CPU dies themselves, even at 100 degrees Celsius, is still not hot enough to melt 33 plus tape. There's no way it's going to get that hot on here whatsoever, especially on the PCB area surrounding the CPU die. Now take a little bit of pride in this, make sure everything is cut, and then carefully cut around the areas where the screws are going to be fastened with the cooler itself onto the motherboard. Take your time here, people, don't rush it. Pretend you are a surgeon. Surrounding the whole entire die area here is not necessary, but what is necessary is making sure those metal contact points are covered. Today I'm going to use some cool laboratory liquid pro. It's all I have in stock right now. I've applied a little bit of that on a towel in an area that you cannot see and I'm using the Q-tip, dabbing it into the liquid metal and just carefully applying it to the die. Now I do have a little bit too much on here at this point, but we're gonna be taking care of that as the process continues. Everything else, including our 1660 Ti, I'm going to use some of the Cooler Master Master Gel today. This is my first time using this, and I am just going to apply everything onto the GPU, the VRMs, chokes, all of that good stuff there. Apply a relatively liberal amount here, and we'll get rocking and rolling. On the CPU side of the cooler itself, I did apply a little bit of liquid metal to that. I did that off screen, sorry I was unable to show that to you today, but we are just simply going to sort of reverse the process here and reassemble the cooler, fasten it nice and snug to our motherboard. Pretty simple, just carefully work around, do not rush, but snug everything up when it's all said and done. Do not just completely screw one screw in all the way and work yourself around, but maybe consider working all the way around all of these screws perhaps two or three times until everything's nice and tight. After that, plug your fans back in, all of your cables, reinstall your battery, put your bottom panel on, and enjoy. Now, I don't think I need to tell you which one is which now, do I? In case you're wondering why I chose to liquid metal only the CPU and not the GPU, well, that's because the GPU runs cool enough on its own and both parts are gonna fight to eventually balance themselves out. Now this could take a great deal of time, but regardless, I find this method that I have done today on this chassis allows us to get very similar CPU and GPU temperatures, and this is going to be the easiest overall best solution for consistency again on this laptop we have here today. Now, if you want to use just a regular thermal paste, such as a Cryonaut or that master maker that we put on the GPU and all the VRMs, chokes and VRAM, by all means go for it. Expect about five degrees cooler than what we see stock over on the left hand side. And that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching.